Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about some of the new features that have come to Zoom recently. The first thing I want to note is that Zoom, obviously all these features are tied to their desktop client software. So to get these new features, you won't have them unless you're running the most current version of Zoom on a Windows or a Mac computer. Uh, that most recent version is 5.3, so you want to make sure that you get that installed first and then you should see these new features available for you. One thing I also want to note is that none of these features have been provided to Zoom's Chromebook client. Zoom is only rolling these out for their Windows and their Mac clients right now. So that means your students won't have access to any of these features if they're using a district supplied Chromebook. Um, so that's something to note. These are going to be more uh, features for you to use as a teacher and things that may not be fully applicable for your class since a lot of your students may be using Chromebooks and Zoom is not providing these features to Chromebooks at this time. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing that I wanna show you is that the gallery view can now be customized by the user. So if you're in version 5.3 or above, you'll notice that you now get this little hand and you can move around your gallery view tiles. So if you decide that you want the order or the sequencing to be slightly different, you can go ahead and move those things around. And whatever that new order is, that's what will appear on your screen. So you can see I'm live right now. I've got three students here with me and I can organize them however I'd like. The other nice piece is that Zoom has included up here in the view menu, the ability for participants to follow hosts video order as well. So if I get this dialed in and one of my students is running version 5.3 of the Zoom desktop client software as well, and I click this, then that student sequence will turn to this as well. Unfortunately, this is not available for Chromebooks, so any students that are on a Chromebook won't have this. So I would encourage you to think about this as a feature for you as the teacher more than for your students at this time, but I want you to know that it's there and available. So again, you can drag and drop to move these things around, and then up here in the view menu, you can either turn on follow host video order or not. Just be advised this won't work for uh, anybody that's not running version 5.3 of the software on a Mac or a Windows device. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. The other thing I wanna show you is that Zoom has made an update to their pin and their spotlight feature. Um, you may have discovered this before in Zoom. Um, if I am in the speaker view, it's gonna highlight whoever should be speaking at that time. So Ferris is the last person to speak and you'll see that's the screen that's there. Um, sometimes though, you want the video view to be focused on just one particular student. So let's say I wanted to be able to focus on Cameron. Even if Ferris interrupts, I want Cameron to be the focus. I can go over here to the jelly bean button and I can pin Cameron to be the main thing that I've seen. Previously, you could only pin one video, I believe at a time. Zoom now allows you to pin up to nine videos. So I could pin Cameron, I could pin Sloan, I can add a pin to Ferris as well. And then these three tiles will stay here no matter what um, when I'm in this mode. So even if somebody else you know, coughs in the background, it won't switch over to their webcam, it'll just stay with these three. Um, so you have this feature, pin is mostly on the uh, the participant end, so it's on, on my end, I would pin to be of benefit to me, and I can remove Ferris's pen just by clicking this. Um, but you also have the ability to let your students do this as well. So you'll notice over here in the participant menu, um, I have Cameron, Ferris, and Sloan. If I head over here to Cameron and I click more, you will notice I don't get the ability to add multi-pen because Cameron's on a Chromebook, and so Cameron doesn't have that feature but Ferris instead is on a personal device running the latest version of Zoom. So when I click more, you'll notice over here, we have the ability to allow Ferris to multi-pin. Unfortunately, there is no global setting for all of your students to be able to have multi-pin, but if you wanna turn it on for students on a case-by-case -case basis, you can do that. The other piece, and this I think might be a little bit more valuable, is the spotlight feature. Spotlight feature is when you've got a key speaker that you want to be what everybody sees on their screen at once. So this is frequently used for like keynote speakers in a webinar or something like that. So if you have a student that is giving a presentation right now and you want your whole class to be locked in on that student, um, one thing you can do is you can spotlight them. So I'm going to go over here to... Ferris's computer right now. And I'm going to turn on the video for this because this only works when that person's webcam is on. So you'll notice Ferris is on right now. And I, as the teacher, can go over here and click this little uh, jelly bean thing. And then I can spotlight Ferris for everyone. So if I click this and turn it on, now everybody's screen, whether they were in 
um, um, gallery view or they were in speaker view, they are all now taking a look at Ferris. So Spotlight is a nice way to control what everybody is looking like at one point. Previous to this, we only had the ability to spotlight one person at a time. You now have the ability to go up here. If Cameron's webcam was on, I would be able to add or uh, add Cameron as all, another spotlight. So there'd be two video feeds that are um, spot lit at once, or I could replace Cameron as the new spotlight. So multi-pin allows you to add up to nine pinned things on your end. Um, Multi-spotlight allows you to spotlight up to nine different people, nine different participants for all of your students all at once. So that's the way those two things work. Let me remove that as the spotlight, and I'm going to go ahead and get back over here to gallery view, and we're going to turn this one off. Okay, so I'm back over here in this mode. Now, another thing that Zoom has rolled out, which I know everybody's probably going to be super excited about, is in breakout rooms. If you click that, you'll notice... There we go. You'll notice that they've added a third option that we didn't have before. And that third option is let participants choose room, which I was so excited to see. The downside again, though, on this is going to be it only works with desktop client 5.3, which is only available on Windows and Mac computers. It's not something Zoom has built into their Chromebook clients at this time. So if you were to click this, you could click create and you could make a couple of different um, rooms all at the same time. So I'm going to do two rooms. And then when you open those rooms, your students would be participated to join whichever room they want, which I know would be a really help, helpful feature. Unfortunately, the only person that can do this is anybody that is um, on a personal device right now. Chromebooks can't do it. So I don't know that this is going to be that valuable for us as teachers, um, unless at some point Zoom brings this feature to their Chromebook service as well. But I want you to know that it's there and that it will work for some. Maybe a couple of your students can hop in if they're on a personal device, but anybody on, anybody on a Chromebook, you would still have to go up and you'd have to manually assign them to a room. So limited benefit for, uh, for us at this time. The last thing I want to show you is just a for fun piece. Zoom has rolled out some new filters that are available for uh, you and for anybody using the latest version of the software. So if you go down here to the video area and you go to this little carrot next to stop video and click that, you'll notice that you have the ability to choose a video filter. And these are exactly what you think they're going to be. If you click that, you'll notice that you've got several different video filters available. You have to do a little quick install first so it can install the software for this. Um, I already did that, so that portion is uh, done for me. Uh, but you can scroll through here and pick a little filter. So I'm going to go pirate mode. I'm going to click this, and you'll notice all of a sudden I'm dressed as a pirate for today's meeting. Um, so anybody that's got the latest version of this on a Mac or a Windows device will be able to play around with some of these filters. And you'll see the filters do a pretty nice job of tracking my face and keeping it where it needs to be. So if you want to add a little bit of levity, a little bit of whimsy into your lessons, go ahead and play around with those filters. That's it. Those are the four new items that have been added from Zoom. Just a quick recap. You can now customize your gallery view and change the order of all this. You can do multi-pin and multi-spotlight on your end and for students. Um, you can, when you go to breakout rooms, you have the ability to let uh, participants self-select breakout rooms. But remember, these are just Windows and Mac features only at this time. And then obviously we have these nifty little filters over here if you want to add some fun into your session. I hope that was very helpful. Um, and if you've got any questions on this, please don't hesitate to let any of us on the uh, Instructional Technology Coach team know. We'd be happy to give you a hand.